So let's let's try and look at a, a tricky example here, something that you guys might um, get a bug with if you are not aware of it. Um, so you have to understand that every time I declare something like this, every time I make a value like this, a space in memory is set up for me. So it grabs a space in memory telling me that i is actually a value of 100 now. Okay, so it gets its own space. Let's just have a look. I just want to show you. Um, it's here in value types. So this is like taking up some space in your memory, your RAM, and there it puts in the value 100, okay? But every time I do this, it'll happen. Even when I send, uh, create a new method, it'll still happen. So in this case, I just wanna show you a, a pretty tricky guy here. So I wanna, I wanna start out by making a value called 100, then I wanna write it to my console, easy peasy. Then I wanna change the value using a method. We'll get back to methods soon. But a method is just a way for me to define something where I can reuse a function, where I can do it again and again, just by putting in a name and then sending some kind of value. So in this case, I wanted the i to be changed from 100 to 200. And I can call it anything up here. It, right now I call it x, but I could actually call it i all the way down here if I want to. There we go, i, 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 like this. It's a value I'm getting in from the outside and it can come from anywhere and it can't be anything. As long as it's an integer value, you can do it from anywhere. That's the idea of a method. So now I would expect that when I get 100 in here, that's what I'm sending in, right? The I here is 100. I convert it into 200, I print it, and then I would expect the last print line here to either be 100 or changed into 200. I hope that makes sense for you because I just changed it up here in this function. Okay, the actual truth is it, it'll end up being 100 again. Because what's happening is, this will make its own spot in memory, but this will also create its own spot in memory. So now we have two different areas in memory, one called i and the other one called x, right? Now they're not called i and x, they're called some kind of unique memory name, like you see here, O times yada yada yada. So you have one called O times 23 and another one called O times 24 whatever. But there are two different areas in memory. That's why we used the out keyword. So let me just try and run this and try and explain how we can fix it. So I'll put in a few breakpoints here just to show you uh, what actually happens. So let's do a start here. And first you'll see that I set I to be 100. Okay, so if I mouse over here, you'll see i is 100. I pass i to the console lock. That's fine. Let's just step over that and you'll see it printed 100 to the console line. Now I change the value of i by sending it into a method. So let's continue and it pops up here. Now x is 100. Okay, x represents i now. And then I say change i into 200 or change x into 200 but it's two different places in memory. So now i in memory is 100 and x in memory is 200, okay? So I print out what I expect to be i or x to the console and I continue here and you'll see now it prints 200. Now either i would be 100 or 200 depending on how you would look at it. The way I explain it now, I hope you understand that it's still 100, but you might as a bug think, okay, now I changed the value into 200 in this function or method, but it's still 100, why? So that could lead to a bug. Let me just continue and show you that it actually ends up being 100. Okay, let's make this work so that it ends up actually being 200. And you saw me using the out keyword earlier. So I just write out here. What the out means is, instead of making a new variable inside memory, use the same one that you are passing in which allows me now to actually change this value. But this is not enough. I also have to explain the function or the method that I want this to be changed and it's okay to do it. So not only do I explain the method that it's okay to do it, but anybody who uses my method, they have to be told, if you're sending in a value here, I'm going to change it, man. I'm going to convert it into something else. So when this guy gets back, it's actually converted the i into 200 now. Let's try and run it again. Notice it's still called x, but in memory now, it knows to point at the same location in memory. So here we start out again with the i being 100. I continue, and now I send in the x value. But 
This time, the x value is pointing to the same place in memory that the i value is pointing. I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, it will later. So here we got x now is 200. I'm going to step over. I console lock the 200, step over. And here I get back, the values now change. And notice, now the i is actually also 200. I'll continue, and of course it writes 200 two times now instead of only one. That's the difference between a reference type and a value type. And there's more about it here on um, reference and value types on tutorials teacher. See you in the next lessons.